relatively classy on this show. Part of the goal of the Indie Game Searchlight is to show a level of respect for the creators and their craft. But very recently, Anthony Carboni, host of the downloadable and independent game show Bite Checker, did a certain photo shoot for the guys at GayGamer.net. But this program isn't just about cheap laughs, so you won't find me shoehorning this goal to I mean shameful opportunity, and I'd like to take the more professional route with this. You got that? Okay, moving on. Zombie games seem to be popping up everywhere these days. In all facets of gaming, the undead do indeed walk the earth and are starting to really overclutter the market. So Bite Jacker, the twin stick shooter we have today, has lots of competition in its own undead subgenre, if you will. On top of that, it's based off the video series mentioned earlier by the same name, minus the Y and making an undead pun out of it. Knowing this comes from the same team that knows browser games in and out, Anthony and Singapore-based developer Secret Base have a lot to live up to. Does this team live up to those high standards? Well, sit back and get comfy. I'm happy to report that the team has crafted a deep, addicting gameplay experience that you're going to be hiding from your boss at work for quite some time. And in terms of price, this game's on the house. Our heroes Anthony and former cameraman John Rivera are both in the middle of a regular rooftop episode when intern Nick Robinson shows up as... The pirate ghost! No, you idiot! Zombie! Run! Yeah, what he said. Basically, Anthony and John have to last all 30 days while fighting their way through a swarm of zombies and getting people to safety. It's built very close to games like Gun.Smoke or Akari Warriors with lots of mutants and street trash to blast through. And those people that you can help save along the way? They got cash. And they gotta pay. So you may be thinking that this is just a 30 level game, right? Well, it's not quite that simple. On top of the undead apocalypse, there's also a terrible Bill Murray movie outbreak. In a clever turn from the developers, you're stuck in Groundhog Week for the same 10 days until you can meet the certain requirements for your cycle of runs. You have to get a high enough kill count, earn enough cash Scott Pilgrim style, and save a certain amount of citizens. But here's the trick. Each time you meet one of these requirements, it also unlocks a new monster to fend off. Sometimes they move faster, or could block your screens, or could shoot lasers at you to mix it up and make it a little harder on you. Or for one of the requirements, it could just add more regular zombies in your way that want to, you know, bite your jacker. Yep, I went there. Once you meet all the requirements, you fight an end boss and can move on to the next 10 days. You also have requirements to upgrade your weapons and abilities that are awarded the more you use them. It can be a tough game sometimes, with lots of undead on the screen at one time, but the game counters this with special moves like Anthony's Bit Trip Transformation or John's Call for Backup. Wow, I didn't think the rope needed that much burning. One thing that Bite Jacker does exceptionally well is its risk and reward system. It presents a lot of goodies for you to go after, and you have a very limited time to try and risk it for the prizes. What do you want to do for this run? Is this a cash run? Do you want to add more to your kill score? Should you build up a certain weapon upgrade? Should you risk saving this victim? Okay, just a little longer to get this thing in the box. Come on, come on, move, come on! You see, for this you have to quickly decide what's more important on your run, and if you don't, you're boned. You even have a risk and reward choice for respawning to try and go on with the level or to start in an easier level to build up some cash. People have commented that it turns the whole thing into a bit of a grind, but it never really felt like I was doing too much of one thing at a time. The great risk and reward system is what really separates this game from the rest, and it makes it a deep, involving experience. And I'm sure you've noticed by now that Bite Jacker is jam-packed with cameos and references to different horror films and games. Obviously, there's Meat Boy, Commander Video, Left 4 Dead, and Mario, but there's even Rocket Bird's Revolution and Mary Gear Solid, and a whole bunch more. Even a few of Bite Jacker's buddies, a la Mortal Kombat references. <laughs> Another thing I really liked about the game is that it never really leans too much on these references. You don't need to know anything about their web series or indie games to enjoy the experience. What they do do is that it gives the game this great geeky charm about it. These guys are obviously in love with the games and horror films they reference and are never sacrificing design for it. They made a great game first and a wink to the camera second. In terms of some of the behind the scenes, a lot of attention has been going to Anthony for the game, and rightfully so. But credit also has to be given to Ray Teo Active and the rest of the Secret Base team. 
Anthony did do a lot of work for the game, and he's credited for doing the voice work, but the original concept and the great artwork is all secret base. And the art here is a very charming 16-bit style that captures the personalities of the hosts and the games they're parody. Overall, the game does have some room for improvement. There are a few reported glitches for the beginning logos, the shotgun does have a pretty limited range and can be pretty useless, and Bitejacker is a case where its steep learning curve could alienate a lot of players. But its design, charm, presentation, and depth definitely outshine the flaws. This game is a grand slam for both Bitejacker and Secret Base. The team has talked about porting the game possibly to the Xbox or iPhone, and no plans for a sequel are in the works. But here's hoping this is the start of a beautiful friendship. Furries.